Hello my friends and welcome to another Affinity Photo Tutorial. I've gotta say it is really a lot of fun to creating these for you, to reading your comments, to discussing with you which topics are important to you. If you want to help me out, please give me an upvote or a like and if you like my videos, maybe subscribe to me so you get the upcoming videos in the future. This time, the most requested topic was how to remove objects from a photo. So we will do this this time and I separated it in three different, how can I say, difficulty levels of removing things from a picture. So I prepared some pictures as always. So um, here we have something with sheep. This is the easiest um, level. Then this is a little bit harder to remove these things from the video. And here we have a very nice street photo, but there is some rubbish in the background. So we want to remove that. Um, that is probably the hardest thing to do, but it's all very easy. Don't worry. Um, and let's get started. So in Affinity Photo, um, there is a tool here on the left in the toolbar and it's called the healing brush tool. This is very important for removing things and it works very good if the background has a lot of similarities. So in this case with the sheep, we not only have a lot of similarities in the background, we also have the added benefit that the background is very noisy. So slight uh, incorrections won't matter that much. So let's take this sheep down here and remove it. And remember, if you remove something, think about the shadow. Don't leave the shadow there and just remove the object. So the only thing we need to do is to click the healing uh, tool, maybe adjust the size of our brush. There we go. Nice and big. And now you have on, if you're on Windows, you have to press S, T, R, G and Alt together and click somewhere. So this gives you a selection of the source. So let's just click here, give some room to the object that you want to remove. So you, afterwards, because if I click here, it's too close. So, um, why is it? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm, <laughs> I didn't click the layer. If you, if you go here, um, you will hit the, the sheep with your, with your brush. So you see it reappears over there. So this is not what we want to do. Um, so the best is to find something that has the same value of, um, how can I say, color, contrast, darkness, lightness. So it's very similar to the part that we want to cover. So don't take something up here, because if I click here, you will see um, it's a, well, okay. I've, actually, it's a, it's a very similar kind of green, but uh, you know what I mean. If, it, if, it's lot, if it's a lot darker, let's take this one, for example. Um, it's, you have a problem with the, with the value of the, of the um, source. So, um, let's take something that's very close, like this here. Uh, close in, in color, not in uh, distance. So we take this as a source, and then we just paint over it. Bam, gone. There is one sheep, gone. And of course you can uh, remove other sheep, no problem. Let's take the other one up here. There's a lot more going on in the background, but it doesn't matter because nobody who is, is nobody knows what was going on in the original picture anyway. So um, let's take maybe, yeah, let's take this part, maybe over here, and then we just paint over it. Oh, I was a little bit too close. See there, there was the error that I was speaking about. Let's go over here. Bam, sheep gone. Very nice. And you might see, if to your eye, you will see that this is kind of, you say, oh, but there is some kind of imperfections. If you don't know that there was a sheep there before, you will not see these imperfections. And this is, by the way, this is another important part of removing objects. Um, don't try to remove objects that are very close to the things that you want to look at, because then people will probably see the imperfections if there are any imperfections, or so the risk is higher. So if you want to remove something, maybe remove it where people are not looking right away. So, okay, now we removed two sheep. You can go ahead. I linked the picture in the description. If you want, try it out. Remove all the sheep and just a clean meadow. Um, try it out. It's a very good exercise. Okay, next one is this. And this is a bit harder because we can't just use the healing brush because there's a lot of stuff going on. I can use the healing brush up here. So there we go. It's gone. But down here, that's more of a problem. You see, it's kind of doesn't look, it doesn't look right. So what we want to do is a combination of the healing brush and the clone brush. 
So first of all, let's go up here and single out this part with selection. I'm sorry, I'm using the um, in the toolbar the freehand selection tool. If you don't see this, click and hold and there is a lot of selection here and click the freehand selection tools. It's a, it's a kind of fast and easy tool. Um, by the way, up here where you have the, the settings for your tool, there is new add, subtract and intersect. So if you have add, it will always add another circle. But if you have new, when you click, it removes everything else and makes a new selection. So keep that in mind if you're surprised why there are so many selections all of a sudden. It's because of this setting up here. It's a bit different to other programs. For example, I don't think you have that in Photoshop. Oh, by the way, there's another thing you want to do is feather. Up here, feather means um, it's kind of a, a blur of the of the um, outside, of the border of the uh, selection. So. Let's go ahead and set this to... Oh, no, no, no. This is way too much. Uh, maybe, maybe 10 pixels wide. And now we do a nice wide selection down here, up until here, where it hits the landscape in the background. Okay. So we've done this. Now we go again to the healing brush tool. And remember, STRG and ALT together. So let's select something over here. You see this has kind of a similar values on similar heights. Let's just take this. And um, don't click any, don't click just anywhere. Click where it is similar from the color, you know? So don't, don't start down here. Start um, on the same level. So there we go. Let's remove this. Bam, gone. Okay, so we've done this. And um, now we can deselect. So this is STA. STRG plus D is deselect. And uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Now um, we have here the horizon. You see, okay, there's a floating uh, mountain in the background. That's not a good idea. Uh, but we can fix this by just copying stuff from over here to here. So now we take the clone brush tool, clone brush, make it maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, this is too small. Make it, uh, this is too big. <laughs> Okay, there we go, there we go, this looks good. Now we just need um, Alt, just click Alt and click somewhere on the horizon that you think fits nicely. Um, maybe try, maybe try, I don't know. Let's let's try this part here, it's kind of good. Um, okay, so, and then you see it gives you a preview. So put it where it hits the background, you see? So this is um, on the on the right position, you know? Um, by the way, up here you see it's a bit um, different colored. So, uh, oh, I have already reduced the hardness. Um, you can go up here, reduce the opacity, maybe to 40, and then select again with Alt, select something, click a little bit here, just to give something that is, um, how can I say? Um, it's it's see-through. Uh, you can see it here. If I if I draw here, it's, it's see-through. So it it softens the edges. So I can click here a little bit and get softer edges where it was too hard before. And now we just have this stump here, and this is super easy. We just uh, let's uh, reset the opacity to 100. And before we had the hardness on nine. I didn't say that the hardness should be very soft. Um, so it's fading into the, the other parts of the image. Okay, now we just select something here, the Alt. Then we go over here on the same level or where you think that it fits. And just move up and down and gone. That was it. That is the big sign removed. And of course you can do the same with the small things here. Um, one second, we go like this. And then we use the clone brush tool again. And um, just, oh, there's a sign here. Uh, wait, um, carefully. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Very nice and easy. There we go, gun. And this is also gun. So the next time a traffic sign or something else sneaks up on you in the middle of taking a picture, you can remove it just like that. It's very easy in these kind of situations. And of course, go ahead, try around with these other things in the background. Try to remove them, it's a really good exercise. Also this file is linked in the description of the video. So now 
we go to the hardest part, um, which is this one, the street scene. It's very nice, but there is some stuff going here that is not very good. Doesn't make a good ex impression. So let's go here. And um, what you want to look for is, okay, there is an architectural element here. There's something I can see in the background. I want to cover this up. Where is something similar in the picture? So let's look on the same level. Aha, there's another one. So it's a bit of find and seek. If you find something that um, fits, if you don't find something that fits, maybe you can reconstruct it. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and um, we go over here again on the left to the toolbar. This time we select the rectangle mark you tool to select the rectangle shape and um, go like this. Give a bit space around it um, so you can have, have some space to work with. Uh, by the way, another part is very important is on the left here where the layer is, it has to say pixel because otherwise you can't copy it. For I don't know why it's very strange with Affinity Photo. You can only copy from a pixel, but not if it says image of, although the image is a pixel. So why it does not convert it I don't know, um, but make sure that it says pixel here, otherwise you will get very confused. So STRG plus C is for copy, and um, then STRG plus V is for pass, or how, how do you pronounce it? I'm not sure. Okay, now STRG plus D to deselect our selection, and oh, let's, let's zoom out so we can find where we have our element. Uh, let's go to the move tool up here. Um, oh, and it's here. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. And we can move it over here. Um, it's very nice and easy. And um, now the only thing we have to do is to try and fit this in here somehow. And the best way to do this, the fastest way, is to go here to opacity and move it down a little bit so you can see the foreground and the background in the same time um, in a way that gives you the information that you need. So just just slide around until you find a setting where you say, yes, this is kind of good. I can see what I need to see. Oh, this is, this is not as um, high, you see? This is, this one is very high, this one is not so high. Um, but again, I don't think it actually matters because nobody knows. We are the only people who know, so we can be tricky about these things and just pretend like um, it never was any different, you know? Um, the only thing we have to respect is the distance of these things, but we can copy one down here. Okay, so let's keep this. So we take this part and already it looks pretty good. Um, the next thing we want to do is let's click on the background layer again and select one from up here. So we need more parts. A little bit like playing with Lego. Um, there we go. We take this one uh, like this. Uh, we can't go too wide here because there's this kind of camera or whatever it is. So copy, paste, and there we have another one. If you copy, paste, always make sure that you are on the source layer when copying. Um, so it doesn't copy it from any other layer. Okay, um, let's push this above the other layer that we created before. And um, let's adjust the opacity again um, to this so we can see, aha, uh -huh, there is something in the background. Um, now let's just connect it here. There we go. Set it back to 100. And this already looks pretty nice. Oh, I, uh -huh, I moved the background. Um, so there, there we are. There we are again. Um, so this is already pretty nice. It's pretty good. Uh, what do we want to do next? Let's see. Um, there's this part. Oh, no, that was too much. Uh, there's this part on the side. We can just copy this over. One second. I have to figure it out a little bit. Uh -huh. Um, okay, let's try to fit this in here. Um, what we want to do is let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see what's going on here. And then we take the erase tool on the left 
Uh, you can press uh, button E, but I mostly select it with my mouse because then I know I have actually selected it. And uh, now what we want to do is to set the width a little bit smaller, maybe like this, then the hardness to maybe 20. And uh, we can reduce the opacity so I get more tries uh, to get it right. So let's set it to maybe 50 or something. 55. Okay, so now it's a lot of clicking and a lot of dragging and we just erase everything to blend it in where we think um, this is not what we need. And you see there's a sharp edge here. This is not a problem. We will do this with the um, copy tool later on. How is this? Ah, okay. All right. Um, so let's go up here. Oh, there's a little edge here now. We can remove that, don't worry. Let's blend this in here. Let's blend this. Why is it not blending? Oh, because I'm... Uh, am I on the wrong... Am I on the wrong layer? Yes, I'm on the wrong layer. Let's hide this other one. Oh, this is on top of it. I see. Okay, so this is going down here. Um, but let's just, let's just blend it anyway. So be sure you're on the right layer to blend it. There we go. Let's blend this a little bit. We don't need to because it's hidden, but I do it anyways. Um, you never know what you need later on. Let's remove this part on the side. Okay, starting to look pretty good. Um, let's go up here. Let's see what's going on in the background. Uh huh. Okay, so I will. I want to leave it up here. Actually, I think this is already good enough. What? Well, where? Where is it? Uh huh. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not good enough. Tricky, tricky. Let's see again. Um, we have to remove this a little bit more. Sorry. Oh, my cat is. I think my cat is hungry right now. But we don't have time. Um, let's set the opacity a little bit higher. It's going a little bit quicker. Why is it not raising? Oh, because it is already. It is already the background. Okay. Um, let's um do some details here. It's. Uh, take the um, uh, what's the name? The clone brush tool again. Uh, set it to a very small size, and and then we clone this a little bit over here, which is not doing it. So we have to select the source, and then I go back to the other layer, and it's not doing it anyways. Okay, why is it not? Aha! This is bad. I don't know what was going on there around here a little bit. I think this is quite okay. That's quite okay. So let's see what else do we have to do. It already looks pretty nice. Um, now we have to fit in this part and remove the cans in the background. So um, there is some hard edges here. Maybe let's protect this layer. And so we just work with this layer. Uh, the, the, the second element. So um, I go back to the erase brush, erase brush, sorry, and um, erase it here a little bit and there a little bit so I don't have any hard edges. Let's remove this. Um, let's have a closer look over here. Um, go down here. There we go. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think this is already pretty much done. Um, okay, let's go to the original layer of the picture and selo uh, select the clone tool again. Clone brush. Um, set it a little bit bigger, maybe. Hard edges are uh, very soft still. Uh, select something here. Does it work? Yeah, it does work. Let's select it over here so we have a little bit more space to work with. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh huh. There we go. I think our super ninja action has removed the trash, and we can even go ahead and clean this up here a little bit. So um, it looks a little bit better than the original does. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. I'll move this a little bit. Maybe remove that a little bit. Maybe remove this a little bit. Okay, I think we're done. The trash is gone. The crappy electric box or whatever this is was also is also gone. 
So um, yeah, this is how you remove stuff in the background. Um, one thing that I want to show you now that you can do is um, if it's in the background and if it has the kind of same color, you can just color pick and paint with the brush. This is also another technique if you have to construct it uh, from scratch. You can just, let's go ahead here, select the brush and then I just drag this in here and, and set it to the right color. And um, now I can paint over it. And of course it is not perfect, but if you make, a, if you make up a whole element, um, it's not that visible. Right now it's visible because it's different to the other parts. So I would use a clone stamp tool. Oh, I, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, but you can, you can use the paintbrush to create shadows, stuff like that. Um, very easily with the paintbrush in a picture. Let's remove this again. Also, you can clean it up by um, selecting the clone brush as we have seen before. Um, let's click on the background layer and go here and it's gone. And go here and it's gone. And go here and it's gone, it's gone. Uh, you can you can clean up. Can make it look a little bit um, more nice, more impressive. I use this a lot for my customers. For example, if they ask me to make a photo of their shop and then the outside of the building is not as perfect, it wasn't painted in the last year, so I clean it up a little bit. So when you look at the shop picture on the website of the store, it looks like super nice, renovated. Um, so it's, it's higher quality and the customers think, wow, I need to visit this shop. So it's a very nice way um, to do this. Okay, this was it. Three days different techniques on how to reconstruct something in a picture by copying it and by using the clone brush. Then we had this, which is a combination of the clone brush, uh, the clone brush down here and, oh, there, there's the other element still, okay. Of the clone brush down here and of the um, healing brush up here in the clouds where um, the background is nice and not so complex. And then we have this element where the background is uniform and noisy so we can also use the healing brush that was it thank you very much for watching leave comments with topics that you would like to see in the next episodes questions that you have and um thank you again and um, please remember to leave a like and maybe subscribe if you like my channel by the way i see right now you have these markings on the sheep and if you're a nature photograph you think ah this doesn't look good it's not so natural, it's not so cool. Let's just go in here, you click on the right layer and then you go clone tool or you can, we can even try the, the healing brush, let's see. STRG and alt, let's click here and then go bum. Uh, okay, I'm. this was not as good as expected. Let's see, mm -hmm. there we go. Maybe a little bit more from here. There we go, clean sheep. So, yeah, if you want to be a professional sheep cleaner, you can do it in Affinity Photo. We can do this also over here. Da, 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 da. And as you see now, okay, there's the shadow is different, but if you didn't know what the original looked like, it doesn't matter as much. You see? So there we go. A clean sheep. You can do pictures that look super natural and very uninterrupted by any kind of uh, mankindish stuff like... Um, street signs and all this other kind of stuff. Okay, thanks again for watching and um, see you soon. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.